Good morning. So uh, tomorrow I'm going to go and uh, go out on the reef and see if I can get some smooth hounds. I've uh, put a trap down and I've got this uh, bucket that I've put some holes in uh, to keep these crabs alive. Uh, the the bait of choice for catching smooth hounds is crab and uh, normally peeler, uh, but they go for any sort of crab, um, spiders, especially this time of year. But uh, in the marina here, we're blessed. We've got loads of hardback crabs. I put a trap down yesterday uh, with some old cuttlefish that I got that I use for conger fishing. So I'm just going to pull this up and uh, see if I've got anything down there. All right. Well, there's literally loads in here. I don't know if you can see that. Look at that. There must be 25, 30 in there. So I'll pick the nice ones out and put the rest back. Now these harbour crabs are pretty savage. So uh, I'm going to put my gloves on because they uh, they pinch like mad. So I'll uh, I'll get them out. The dog, oh, come out the way because it'll bite you. So the dog uh, is interested in them. There's one got out already. Right, come out you. Uh, I've got my gloves on ready to get them out. So really, I don't want all the massive ones, but these nice little ones are, these are a perfect size for the smooth hounds. If you can see that. Come out, skip. These are the size really, the ones you want. They're perfect size. See, I've got a few in here now. Right, well that's got the uh, the bait for tomorrow, so I'm um, just gonna get the boat set up. I'm probably gonna fish with a couple of 12 to 20 Kanzaki rods. Uh, I normally use about a seven foot trace with uh, probably a 6-0 hook tomorrow. And I'm going to try perhaps one with a Muppet and one without a Muppet. And I'm going to put an uptide rod up um, with a herring bait on or something. There uh, might be some taupe out there. Right, I'm going to get my rods out that I'm going to use tomorrow. Oh, I put them in these, these cheap socks. I think I got them on Amazon. That just saves them getting tangled up when they're under the floor. Oh, let's put that one there. There's my other one. So yeah, basically I just, uh, I put them in this and then they're all ready, all ready, uh, ready to go. So these are just, uh, these are the older Kanzakis, I'll be honest with you. I love these ones. Um, and all I'm going to use is a, is a uh, flowing trace. So my leg goes on there, snap swivel. And as I said, I'm going to make up these traces. I'll probably use 100 um, pound uh, mono because I've already got that there. Um, and I'm going to make about, about a seven foot trace, I suppose, from sort of my door back to my baiting table's probably long enough. That's probably only about six foot, but that'll do. And I'll try and mup it on one and um, I'll just leave the other one as it is. As I said, I'm going to fish fresh crab tomorrow and uh, hopefully um, there's a lot of may rot in the water still. So um, I'm hoping that's not going to be a problem, but uh, yeah, it's fishing at the end of the day. So I'll just try and do what I've got to do. Well, I've actually got some of this uh, this 50 pound fluorocarbon, which will be perfectly fine. And it give a little bit more movement to that crab. Um, and <clears throat> I'm going to use these, uh, these are a meat hook, just Cox and Roll 6.0. Uh, they'll be perfect for the job, quite strong, sharp. And uh, just, I'm going to put these Muppets on. Uh, these are, uh, you know, I don't know, are they there to catch the fish or catch the angler? But I think anything that attracts is going to help me out, especially with the clarity of the water at the minute. Okay, so uh, this is what I'm uh, going to use. 6-0 Cox and Roll, attached to 50 pound fluorocarbon. And uh, basically there's no real secret with this knot. It's just, uh, I just normally go uh, through the line, wrap it round six times. and then back through the loop, wet that, 
and then I'll uh, I'll just hook it here and give it a pull so it's nice and tight and that's it so I think that I'm going to give it I'll hook it on my bait table here and I think I'll uh, if I go about this long to my door I think that'd be plenty <coughs> so I'll cut that off I've got some snips here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a I think this is a two size two barrel swivel quite a strong one and that go directly onto that snap swivel there and these traces are made up but oh yeah I better put the muppet on so I'm going to put one of these so I just literally so I just cut the the bit of the nose bit off so that the line I go through it and I want it over the hook so I go up through it like that and that go down the line and then put my barrel swivel on and how I attach the barrel swivel is exactly the same way as I do the hook so round it six times and through the loop wet it and I'm not too worried about that tag end being long there what I'll do is with this end here I'm going to cut that one down a little bit just to yeah just so it's like that so that's what it is some people like circle hooks I'll be honest I just use the hooks that I've got available to me so that's it and then this muppet will go down like that and it's just gonna swing around in the tide and hopefully that'll attract but that's one trace done so I'll make the other one up and uh, then I'm good to go on that side as I said I'm gonna set up a I think I'll do an uptide rod for taupe and I'll also have a downtide one as well that I've got loads of herring and stuff and I'm gonna stick a rod out see if I can get some fresh mackerel but uh, I'm not sure if they're there I think they're coming up in dribs and drabs but um, yeah, that's really the bait for the taupe is fresh mackerel. But, uh, you know, if they're hungry, they'll take anything. A rod I use for taupe fishing, it's, uh, yeah, again, uh, Dawa Kanzaki. This is a newer version, not the newest, but this is uh, uh, the gold sort of colour one. Quite nice. But the beauty with this is it's got like a twin speed pen fathom uh, reel on it. It's a uh, 30 lever drag and it's two speed. So it's... Uh, you know you can have it fast or slow retrieve which is ideal um i've got one for congreen and and two for tote fishing but this is just a bit of a heavier setup um if i did get something nice uh, then this will be able to handle it easier and uh you know it's nice to play the fish in with this reel but uh on this one i should set up i think i've already got some traces set up uh this has got like a hundred pound um shot leader on it uh because you know if they rub up against it it'll stop it uh snagging and 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 uh, you know their skin's quite abrasive so it'll cut the line but uh exactly the same setup with these with these booms i find these quite good and i've just got a stronger uh snap locking snap swivel on this um so yeah it'd be worth a try i'll be honest i'm not fishing on my normal tote ground mark so i'm just really putting it down just to see if they're there because what the tote tend to do is they go for the smooth hound babies uh, this time of year uh they're uh, they're fair play for them um so i'm just going to put some you know put a nice big bait down there and just see what happens now with the tote fishing <clears throat> I, I like to use um 150 mono i never use a um wire trace i had an experience years and years ago where i was fishing with someone and they used a wire trace and it sort of cut the fish all down the belly and it's put me off for life so i just use 150 mono and i still use a meat hook i've got them laying around but this is the tenno and i use a muppet and with this i normally go about five or six foot wire trace so uh, i'll make this one up and show you So again, um, pull this out. Again, I do, but I do a slightly different knot with this because it's thicker line. So I literally I go around twice, and then I make a loop, and then I go through that loop twice. Wow, 
Let's go around three times. And this has never let me down. Wet it. What I do, I stand on this, pull this up tight. Make sure it's on there properly. And that's a knot there. And that's super strong. That won't go anywhere. It's never let me down. I use this one for congering and all sorts. But yeah, Tenno, I'm going to put a Muppet on and I'm going to give it about. Thread the muppet on again, inside out so it goes over that, and then get another barrel swivel. And then I do the same again, go around twice, make a loop, and go through that a couple of times, it's fine. Pull that tight. And the only reason I do this, I don't do that knot on the other one is because the line's a bit thinner and I don't know, just just how it is. I just seem to do this knot with this, uh, this heavier mono. And that's my tote gear. So that's all ready for tomorrow. Two for smooth hounds and one for tote. And I will put an uptide rod up as well and bung one over the side for some mackerel. And I'm hoping that I can get this underwater robot thing down but I don't know if I'm going to be able to um, I'm fishing on my own tomorrow so it might be hard work but I will try if I can I can if I can't I won't so the weights I'm hoping to use it's I think it's just under a seven meter tide tomorrow so shouldn't be a great deal but I'm going to use these two on my smooth hound rigs and I'm going to use this one for the uh, tope and what I intend on doing is putting the tope bait down first and trotting that right out just keep lifting it and letting it go out with the tide to get that bait away from everything else I'm not sure I might even put the tote rig uh, the tote rod around the front of the boat so it's completely out of the way from the smooth hounds and uh, hopefully that'll work for me but uh, let's get out there tomorrow and see how it goes so I hope you enjoy the video and please subscribe it doesn't cost anything to subscribe and it means the world to me um, and hopefully this little one will stay in the boat tomorrow he's getting very brave at the minute he's like Kate Winslet when he when I go in and out the lock he's at the front he thinks he's on the Titanic and there's my bestie Pip but yeah he's, uh, he's becoming a really good dog at the minute when you get some well with her so uh, anyway I hope you like I hope you like the video and um, keep watching thank you all right good morning it's uh quarter past seven it's sunday morning i've just got down to the boat i think it's doubtful i'm going to get this half seven lock so i'm not going to rush i've got to get my traps up and uh, get myself set up so uh, i'll probably be getting the eight o'clock lock and go out uh, my target today is smooth hound and maybe a tope i'm not really going on my tope ground but i'll have a try uh, but yeah, I'm hoping uh, there's been some coming up off the beach, so uh, I'm going to have a try today, but my uh, my bait today is crab, so I'll get my trap up and see how I get on. Well, I've got loads in there, I don't know if you can see those. Right, come out Skip, because you're going to get pinched. Some real beauties in there. I really only want the really small ones uh, for fishing, but uh, I'll let these go when I get it to sea. Right, well, I'm just going to make my way around now. I've got a couple of minutes, so I've got a raft up, but that's not a problem. Thank you.
Right, so I've just thrown the anchor out and uh, I'm about, I suppose about 300 yards away from where I want to be. So I've just let the anchor, it'll just pay itself out. And when I'm happy, I'll tie it off. So I'm just drifting back slightly. I don't know if I can show you this on this uh, other camera. So yeah, this is the area here and you can see my cursor. So I'm drifting over and I want to be on this ledge here, just over that ledge. That's where I'm hoping the, uh, well, smooth hounds hopefully today, but uh, who knows, the, uh, say we're right in the middle of May rot here. It's not uh, great conditions for fishing, but you know, my theory is fish are still eating. So uh, I've got a nice scent trail down. I've got some nice fresh crab here, so we'll try. Uh, let's put this down. So it's still paying out, so I'm going to tie it off in a minute. I reckon the time I tie that off, I'll be just on that ledge. 200 from where I want to be, so I reckon if I tie off now, tie my lines, get down, I should be uh, on the money. I don't know if you've seen, my boy has turned to a man. He's in his full size, uh, full size life jacket now. He was doing his Kate Winslet impression this morning. He loves standing on the front of the boat, but yeah, proper sea dog. Right, let's get these rods down. So I've got one as a tote rig and two as a smooth hound. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'll get the tote one down first and bounce it right out. I want that quite a way away from the boat. And uh, then I'll set the other two up where well, they're already set up. I'll just bait them up. So I'm just gonna, uh, I don't think it's gonna be a great deal of tide out here today. So I'm just gonna put an eight ounce on this. Uh, which is probably overkill, but as I say, I've got a, I've got quite a strong reel on this tope set up, and I'll put this out the back, and I'll run this on a ratchet. So if I do get a take, the ratchet will scream. So um, yeah, hopefully we'll hear some of that today. As I said, really, I'm just uh, chancing my luck here with toping today. Uh, I haven't got any fresh mackerel, but I've got some lovely uh, frozen herring. And uh, on my nice baiting table now, it makes it a lot easier. Save me crawling about on my knees like I have been for God knows how long. So let's just get one out. So I'm just going to cut the tail off. And I think I'm going to fish this as a flapper. So I'm going to go up here like that. And then up the other side. Try and cut that bone out. Not that it matters too much. There you go. And uh, I've got a 10 0 and Raw hook on this. I'm literally just going to go up through the head. It's quite strong, so I don't think I need to uh, to bait elastic that. So that's got like a nice flap on that. Straight through. So let's get this one out. First of all, I'm going to try and flick this out so I get it down uh, away from the boat a bit. So let's try and just flick that out. That's it. I want that one quite away from the boat. So when it hits the bottom, I'm just going to lift it slightly and bounce it back in the tide. So we are pretty good on that ledge, I think. I don't know what the sound is showing. Yeah. So it's hit bottom now. I'm just gonna just let that go right out as far as I can. I want it as far away from my smooth hound traces as I can. So it's going out quite away now. I think that'd be good there. So I'll say, I'm gonna put it on ratchet so that I just pull if I start to get a run. Right, let's get these smooth out ones set up. Right, doesn't matter what. One, they're both the same, these ones. So again, I've gone both with Muppets. Uh, I do like this. And on this one, I've got like a seven foot trace and I'm only gonna use a little six ounce weight on this. 
and I've got these uh, these coloured ones like a like a diamond uh, one these are only six ounce so these are uh, should be fine so let's get the crab on and get it out well, I'm going to pull one of these rods in and I think I'm going to edge my bets a bit and uh, I've got some frozen squid in there so I'm going to put that on there and wrap it round and just see it's trouble you start doubting yourself a little bit so um, crab is the bait that I always catch smooth hounds on but we'll just uh, I'm just going to try that one down I've got three options then there we go let's find the end all right so start at the hook end going round the shank okay and there's the bait there whole squid 6-0 hook let's get this over okay so let that uh, go out it's actually moving quite fast uh, the tide which might help for these smooth hounds and tote, but so this just ups my uh, my options a little bit. I've got three baits out then. Let's lock that reel in, and I'm going to check this one. I think while I'm here, uh, yeah, that's not snagged. So I'll just check my bait to see if I've still got my crab on. Yeah, crab's still on. So I've got quite a few, so I'm going to change my bait and get it back down. There he is. He's on there now. Muppet's on there, so let's get this down. We've got Panther, the uh, charter boat, trekking all over me. At the minute, I don't know what he's, uh, he's got a boatload on there. So I just let that trot down in the tide. Okay, I'm on bottom now. Let's let that out a little bit. So yeah, so I've got crab on there. I've got my herring flapper on there for the tope. And now I've just put some, a whole squid on this one. So I've got three options here. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully, hopefully, not any more dogfish, please. Or not that variety. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to check my uh, tote rod and just see. It's been out there quite a while. I don't want it being out there with no, um, with no bait on. I'm not sure. Might be a fish on there. Don't feel like a tote. Oh no. It's a little conga. If you can see that. Didn't even know I had it on. Now let me get my gloves on. And they're a bit slimy. I'll see, I'll get it in, but I'll uh, try and T-bar it off. Hopefully it's not taking this hook down too far. Well, I didn't even know I had a bite on there. If you can see that, only a little baby. <laughs> little baby eel. So hopefully I can get this hook. Oh yeah, the hook's just there. Oh, that's a result. Slimy bugger, little eel. Try and get a photo of him if the dog don't get in the way. Right, so I've just put this herring on and I'm gonna stab it a few times to release all the oil and the guts. I've not made this one a flapper this time. I've just cut the tail off of it. 
tenno hook again. I'm just going to chuck that out. So it's touched the bottom, so I'm just going to bounce it back again. Just lift it up and let it bounce. And then that will move that further away from the boat. That's it. Yeah, what a mess they make. Slime as anything. Yeah, it's a glorious day out here today. Let me uh, see if I can show you. You'll get a better, a better look at it uh, with the iPhone. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, it's lovely and flat. There's Beachy Head over the side there. If you can see that, that's Beachy Head. And there's our uh, famous tower that's going to come down. I don't know when, but soon. But yeah, just look at the uh, the water. As I say, it's very, very cloudy, full of May rock. Yeah, beautiful, flat, calm day. Now, I don't want to tempt fate, but I think I've got a little inquiry on that tote setup I've just put down. Move this camera around a bit. Just starting to knock a little bit, whether it's just pouting down there or little dogfish. I mean, on this reef, generally, when the uh, tope are feeding, they're all over it. You know, they uh, they're just not in one area. They, um, as I say, really, they're chasing the uh, smoothhound puppies. What you want to hear is that real go screaming off, but and literally I've just put half a herring on this time. Just put the head on. There's the tail and that there. They're super oily. I say ideally, really you want fresh mackerel, but don't seem to be. Uh, there's the odd one or two showing up now. That's what I want to see. Hopefully that's a tote. Not sure if he's on or not. I think he is. Right, I'm just getting an inquiry on this uh, back rod, I'm hoping. You know, you've got to change things around a little bit. If one thing's not working, try something else, you know, so. Hopefully. Maybe getting a little inquiry on that one as well. I don't think we're dragging a little bit. Let's just check. Feel like a tote. Feels quite heavy though. Right, I've got a bite on this rod here. Just reeling my other one in and uh, just put some fresh bait down on this one. Just started to get an inquiry now, so I'm hoping. As soon as you put the camera on, it stops. Right, let's reel this one in and see what if that one progresses. Let's change this bait. So there's nothing wrong with that, I'll be honest. I might just slash that up a bit. Put a flapper in that. And stab it a few times, get a bit of juice out. I don't think there's a lot wrong with that one.
There you go. There you go, that's what I want. That's a taupe. On, I think. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, dear. It's just come off. <laughs> it's just come off. Now it gets you thinking is your bait still on there or isn't it? Tempted just to let that go back down. Let's let that go back down a minute and uh, give that another go. That was a definite run there. Oh no. Devastated. Oh well. Right, I've got to run on this rod now. Just started, just while I'm baiting up. Hopefully, I'm going to try and leave it this time. I don't want to strike too early. So I'll just try and bait this one up. Hopefully it'll do its second run. Get this one over. I think that is on. Hopefully this is something nice. Surely that's hooked now. <laughs> I hope so. on now oh please don't lose it so I've been a little bit too amp been a little bit too uh, hasty to strike you know so I didn't want to lose this so it feels quite nice let's get this other camera on uh, yeah that's a taupe Don't want to lose it. Don't really know the size of it at the minute because it paid, took quite a bit of line out, but I don't think it's massive, but. I hope I don't catch my other line. I've just put out, I should have left that in. It comes. Come on. I don't want to lose it messing about just trying to get it on camera. Oh yeah, it's nothing massive, but oh, it's quite nice, actually. I don't know if you can see that in the tide, it's quite big. Great. Now, the next thing is to try and get it in. Oh, 
lovely. Oh no, it's not massive, I'll be honest. But it's nice to have. <laughs>